irrelevant. But Jesus didn't mind giving up his identity in order to prove that he is a dwell among us God. He stripped himself from a celestial being and allowed himself to be born in sin. Now I want to express something here. I want you to get this with clarity. What a price he paid. He paid a price so that I can raise my hands in church. He paid a price so I can talk to the devil and get him off of my back. He paid a price that I can stand and rebuke those spirits trying to come at me on my job and in my house. He paid a price so that you can't bother me no matter how hard you try. He paid a price that if you talk about me, I'm going to keep on living holy. He paid a price, gave me a right to lift my hands and dance my feet and move my body and shake my head and let the folk know I am saved. 2 Corinthians 5, Paul tells us that God made Jesus sin. It's amazing that God would take him now. The only one of his kind. The only one like Jesus. Because if he was to take you and I, it would not work. Because you and I are already sinners. But he takes Jesus, the only one of his kind, and he doesn't make him a sinner, but he makes him sin. I'm going to say that again. He does not make him a sinner, but he makes him sin. You see, my brothers and sisters, had God made him a sinner, then he would have died for himself. Had God made him a sinner, it would have been selfish what happened on the cross. But because he made him sin, when he died on the cross, he died for you and for me. Can I teach for a minute? The reason God chose to make him sin and not a sinner is that sin is common in all cultures. Sin is common in all ages. Sin is common in all generations, in all denominations, in all organizations. So it doesn't matter where you come from or what your background is. The one thing we have in common is we all know sin. And Jesus was made sin. You can become an intellectual sinner. You still know sin. You can become a handsome or beautiful sinner. You still know sin. You can be a rich sinner, a poor sinner, a black sinner, a white sinner, a Chinese sinner. You still know sin. So God made Jesus what was common to all mankind. He made him sin. Am I doing all right? He made him the very thing that distastefully despised him the most. He allowed him to be that one object of his own wrath. He made him sin that I might raise my hands and lift my voice, that I might sing songs. God made him sin. But look at somebody and say, but not the sinner. You gotta understand, God made him a lie, but not the liar. God made him disobedient, but not the disobedient. God made him envy but not the envious. He made him robbery, but not the robber. He made him hatred, but not the hater. He made him wife abusing, but not the wife abuser. He made him fear, but not the fearful. He made him drug addiction, but not the junkie. He made him prostitution, but not the prostitute. He made him adultery, but not the adulterer. He made him homosexuality, but not the homosexual. He made him witchcraft, but my God, sure enough, is not the witch. He made him sin. 
Jesus. Isaiah saw that Gethsemane. Look at my Jesus. He isolated himself from his disciples. Look at my Jesus. His mental state, his emotional state. No doubt he was drastically depressed under the enormity of the weight that was set before him. Look at my Jesus. Caught in the middle of perplexity between his humanity and his divinity. Look at my Jesus. He was fighting with the weight of everyone's shoulders. He was fighting with your depression. He was fighting with your stress. He was fighting with your bad habits. He was fighting with your bad attitude. Look at my Jesus. Walk down with everybody's depression. Walk down with everybody's pain. Until his sweat glands refused to function properly. Instead of pouring down sweat, he was so bogged down until he began to pour out blood. The doctors call it hemoglobin, which is a mental state that causes the whole body to fail to operate in its proper functions. Look at my Jesus. Instead of water coming down, the enormity of this mental pressure caused his body to get confused and where water should have been. Blood started to pour. Look at my Jesus. Isaiah saw when they arrested him, brought him to the Jewish courts, tried him from 1 a.m. to daybreak. Five hours he was now being dealt with by inferior men, men of which he could have shaken his master up and they would have exploded. Men of which he could have blinked his eye and they would have disappeared. Look at my Jesus. He stayed there and took the chastisement for me. Isaiah said the chastisement of my peace was upon him and with him. Like everybody in here today. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, they couldn't find fault with him. They tried to get him on blasphemy, but they knew that couldn't work. So what they did was they took him over to Pontius Pilate. They decided that I can't kill him at this level. And they took him over to the Roman courts. And they said a lie to Pontius Pilate. So Pontius Pilate would have Jesus killed. They didn't care how to do it. They just wanted to make sure that Jesus would be killed. Don't you know somebody that will do anything to get you in trouble? They say that misery loves company. Which means that if I got to get in trouble, you won't get in trouble too. If my baby brother was here, he'd be my witness. For whenever my parents were about to whoop me, I'd tell a good lie, Mama Pat. Because I felt better if I'm going to get a whooping. And JV's getting a whooping with me. And that's just the way that the devil works. They tried him in the wrong court. He was being crucified by his own people. There's nothing worse than your own family turning the back on you. I've got no witnesses in here. There's nothing worse than your own best friend that said they have your back. And nowhere to be found. There's nothing worse than having your spouse say, I got your back, baby. But soon, as things get rough, you can't find them in the dark with a flashlight. There's nothing worse than your own folk. And here Jesus is amongst his own. 